you guys, you come this way, we start over this side. And you follow the footpaths. We have a brocket deer right here. They're native to the Yucatan as well as Central and South America and the island of Trinidad. We're really fortunate that they have them here at this reserve because they usually only come out at night and they're very rarely seen in the wild. In the wild you never ever find them in large herds. They're very solitary creatures. They either live alone or in pairs with their mates and they're actually monogamous meaning they have the same mate their entire life. python right there. We have some Cuban iguanas right here. As you can guess by the name, they're native to Cuba. You don't see right in front. Some budgies right here. I still have these as pets. We have a green monkey right there. They get their name by that sort of olive green color they have. Now they were actually brought over by slaves in the 1600s from West Africa and they've sort of been causing problems because they've been damaging farmers fields and stuff. Also coming into people's yards and in fact one of these monkeys was even responsible for an island-wide blackout on Halloween of 2006. Now over 400 years of living on the island and over 75 generations of monkeys they've sort of evolved different characteristics than the ones in West Africa. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, the, the little one interrupted them having sex, which happens quite often. And I'm not just talking about monkeys here. And this is where Rihanna lives. Right here. Oh, wow. <laughs> she owns one of the suites. And also another famous person who owns one of the suites is Simon Cowell. Oh. <laughs> One thing you'll quickly notice about Barbados is that the people here do not like to be on camera, unlike other places I've visited in the world. I've already been yelled at by the locals a few times, so this is one place where the people do not like to be on camera for some reason. I was just filming a bus and the driver stopped and started yelling at me to give him money for taking his picture. And then another time I was taking a picture of a lifeguard tower and this guy also demanded money just because he was standing there with his bike. I've never seen anything like it before. One of the biggest concerns that people have when traveling to another country is the water. And I was told by this expat lady in town not to bother buying bottled water here in Barbados. And the reason why is because it's expensive and completely unnecessary because Barbados actually has the third cleanest drinking water in the entire world. So you can just drink straight from the tap and 
I know what's safe for locals isn't necessarily safe for gringos, but I've been drinking the tap water here for the past few days and I feel perfectly fine. So my advice to you is save yourself a ton of money. Don't buy the bottle of water here. Just bring a few empty bottles and just drink the tap water. Now the bus works great for exploring the west coast of Barbados, but if you want to explore the interior and eastern part of the island, traveling by bus gets a bit difficult, but luckily there are other options. There are several companies that offer day tours around the island, but tour companies tend to rush you and only show you the places they think you want to see. But one option that has become really popular with travelers to Barbados is to hire a private driver for the day and this option is really great because with a private driver you have the freedom to make your own itinerary and explore the island at your own pace and you can either book a driver ahead of time or you can find one when you get on site. I booked one a month in advance and there are a lot of travel sites like TripAdvisor that have a list of recommended drivers but if not it's really easy to find one when you arrive as well because a lot of taxi drivers will offer you day tours around the island. We're waiting for our driver Tsamji to come pick us up and take us around the island. And today, today there is a sailing race, you know, a Mount Gay sailing race. The blue is signifies this color of the sky uh -huh. and the color of the sea. Uh -huh. The yellow is the color of the sun. sun. Okay. Mm -hmm. The black is a trident. It's broken. So it, it means we are breaking away from British colonial. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, good. So we don't want British anymore. <laughs> This beautiful building right here is the Gun Hill Signal Station and it was built in 1818 and it's actually a series of around five signal stations that were all built around the island at around the same period. Today there are only three of them left. This one's the most, largest, most beautiful and best preserved. The purpose of these signal stations was to sit there and watch the sea for any approaching enemy ships but also to keep an eye out for slave rebellions and if anyone saw an enemy ship approaching or a slave rebellion taking place they would wave a flag to signal to the other stations that there was something going on. What made these stations excellent warning systems in the 1800s now offers excellent views for visitors. Oh wow! This spot is so gorgeous that sick and injured soldiers were actually sent here for convalescence. This is the island's famous the lion at Gun Hill. It was carved in 1868 by Captain Henry Wilkinson. about a year, so he must have been really bored here. This beautiful garden right here is the Hunt's Garden. Now, it's not the most popular garden on the island. The most popular is absolutely the Andromeda Garden, but I've chosen to visit this one instead because this one looks the most beautiful. Just how dense the vegetation is it was really like a tropical rainforest. I don't think I've ever been to a botanical garden where the vegetation has been as dense as it is here. This is truly something unique. I think this is the most beautiful botanical garden I've ever seen. Okay. 
Well, I tell you what I want you to do for me. Do you have a right on the internet? Yeah. Do you, what do you write on? TripAdvisor? Yeah, yeah TripAdvisor. Yeah. Well, that really helps me. I oh. put some of the... We were about to leave, but we just ran into the owner, Anthony Hunt, and he invited us up to his house. Our driver told us once this guy starts talking to you, you're going to be here a while. So these little chattel houses were on the sugarcane plantations. And what you can do is, if you're if, if the chattel house is on one section of the plantation, mm -hmm. you finish work on this section, you can physically lift the house oh, and, oh, wow. oh, section, and then and oh. then you continue working. That's why they're called chattel houses. Oh. Because chattel means move easy to move. This beautiful area right here is called the Welchman Hall Gully. I really wanted to see this area because unlike Yesterday when we visited Harrison's Cave where you have to take a tour here all over the place They have these small limestone caverns that you can walk into and explore by yourself So that's more the types of caves I like so we'll have a look around it should be an interesting area This is actually our first look at a Barbadian rainforest What actually happened was is when the area was colonized by the English and they had all the plantations, they actually cut down all the original forests. So today all the rainforest you see here has actually been replanted. This bizarre looking tree you see behind me is a Jamaica evergreen. Oh yeah. Watch out. Be careful, it's really slippery. Oh wow. Brian. Now this sort of formation we're seeing right here is actually a grotto which is basically a shallow cavern you can see it doesn't go very deep it's sort of an overhang but we do have some small formations right here don't get too close to that tree this stuff I'm actually familiar with. This looks like shell mushroom, which we have in North America too. Behind me are the ruins of the Farley Hill Mansion that was built in 1818 and it was once regarded as the grandest mansion in all of Barbados and it was actually used as a filming location for the movie Island in the Sun but in 1965, the mansion was burnt to the ground in a fire and they never rebuilt it. And today it's a national park. Now the house actually came into the possession of Joseph Biggs in 1850, but he never actually lived in this house. And in 1856, he actually gave it to his son. He actually made several additions to this house and one of those additions was a beautiful garden and he actually imported several plant and tree species from different parts of the world. The mansion was actually visited by several members of the British royal family including Prince Albert and the Prince George and Queen Elizabeth herself was actually here. She didn't sleep here but in 1966 when Barbados became independent she was actually here to declare it a national park. The site also hosts several music events throughout the year, including a reggae fest and gospel fest, two of the island's biggest music festivals. This beautiful building behind me is the island's famous St. Nicholas Abbey. It's one of the island's most famous attractions, and it was built in the year 1658 by Benjamin Berenger and it's the largest great house on the island and the island's oldest building and the original owner Benjamin Berenger he was actually killed in a duel by his neighbor who was also his best friend and business partner and as usual it was over a woman in this case Berenger's wife who his friend later actually married and he actually claimed the abbey for himself but a court ruling returned it to the Berenger's children who later named the abbey St. Nicholas Abbey after George Nicholas who was the husband of Berenger's granddaughter. And this is only one of three 
examples of a genuine Jacobian mansion known to exist in the Western Hemisphere. This one and another one is Drax Hall, also on Barbados and Bacon Castle in Virginia. After the Berengers, the house was actually owned by four different families. What's amazing about this house is that it was actually inhabited all the way up until 2006 when John Petri sold it to its current owners, the Warrens, who decided to turn it into a museum and share this beautiful piece of Bajan history with others. This is a sort of a national drink in Barbados. It's called rum punch. They sort of put rum in it and mix it with fruit punch and inside is some of the famous St. Nicholas Abbey rum which they produce right here. Mm -hmm. Good. The St. Nicholas Abbey rum is actually said to be the best rum on the entire island but I think I drank it a little too fast. <laughs> This is where they would bathe. This is St. Nicholas Abbey's in the sugar mill and they've been growing sugar cane here on the land since 1640 and it was processed all the way up until 1947 and the sugar cane industry sort of shut down. These days they only do occasional demonstrations of sugar cane grinding on Wednesday and Thursday. Oh wow. <laughs> too much St. Nicholas Abbey rum. <laughs> you had too much rum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good, it's good. We rum. Already <laughs> you can do with us whatever you want. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Planted cherry trees all over. And he left Barbados and went to England for some time and he had a manager who was in charge of the plantation. A lot of people in the area used to come over and pick the cherries. He didn't like it. Every time he kept chasing them away, they kept coming back. So finally he decided to cut down all the cherry trees. Uh -huh. So we still have the name cherry tree, but he planted mahogany trees over uh -huh. here. Yeah. This is Cherry Tree Hill, the second highest point in Barbados.